Captain Sage, Royce stood on the observation deck, gazing out at the decrepit heap of metal that passed for a starship. The river-class freighter looked like it had seen better centuries, its hull pockmarked with dents and carbon scoring. Exposed wiring dangled from open access panels, sparking intermittently. It was a miracle the damn thing was still spaceworthy. You've got to be shitting me, Royce muttered under his breath. Command expects me to fly that piece of junk into battle? His first officer, a lanky Arcturian named Griloth, shook his head in disbelief. The Galactic Commonwealth must be truly desperate if they're dragging that relic out of mothballs. I wouldn't trust it to make a milk run, let alone engage the Creelan Armada. Royce couldn't argue with that assessment. The human Creelan war had been raging for over a year now, and the Commonwealth was getting its ass handed to it on a daily basis. The insectoid warriors were ruthless, efficient, and technologically superior in every way. Their ships were sleek, deadly works of art that danced circles around the clunky Commonwealth vessels. But what the humans lacked in advanced weaponry and shielding, they made up for in raw audacity and unconventional tactics. Time and again, they had snatched victory from the mandibles of defeat through sheer grit and crazy ass flying. It was a testament to the indomitable human spirit that they hadn't been crushed outright. Well, I guess we better go introduce ourselves to the old girl, Royce said with a wry grin. See if she's got any fight left in her. They made their way down to the hangar deck, the sharp click of their boots echoing through the corridors. Royce tugged at the high collar of his dress uniform. He much preferred the comfortable familiarity of his flight suit, but appearances had to be maintained, even in the face of impending doom. As they approached the Rafir, Royce could see a small crowd gathered around its boarding ramp. Technicians swarmed over the hull like ants, welding plates and splicing wires in a frantic attempt to make the ship battle ready. A few other pilots stood off to the side, eyeing the freighter with obvious disdain. I see they scraped the bottom of the barrel for this mission, sneered a square-jawed man with commander's bars on his collar, letting a human fly the most important op of the war. What's next, putting a Denebian in charge of fleet operations? Royce bristled at the casual speciesism, but kept his expression neutral. He was used to the snide comments and sideways glances. Humans were still relative newcomers to the galactic stage, and many of the older races viewed them as primitive upstarts barely a step above savages. Never mind that human ingenuity and daring had saved the Commonwealth's collective asses more times than he could count. Commander Trask, Royce said coolly, extending a hand. I don't believe we've had the pleasure. Trask looked at the proffered hand as if it were a dead fish before reluctantly shaking it. Captain Royce, I've heard a lot about you. The hero of Deneb, isn't it? Quite the reputation. I just did my job. Same as any other pilot. Right, well, good luck with that. Trask waved dismissively at the Rafir. You're going to need it. With that, he turned on his heel and stalked off, his lackeys trailing behind him like obedient dogs. Royce watched him go, his jaw clenched tight. Arrogant prick. Grilleth laid a calming hand on his shoulder. Ignore him, Sage. We've got bigger things to worry about. Royce took a deep breath, letting the anger drain away. Grilleth was right. They had a mission to focus on, and petty rivalries had no place in the cockpit. He squared his shoulders and marched up the boarding ramp, ducking his head to avoid a dangling cable. The interior of the riffer was just as much of a disaster as the outside. Exposed piping crisscrossed the ceiling, and the deck plating was scuffed and dented. The air smelled of ozone and stale sweat. But as Royce ran his hand along the bulkhead, he felt a strange sense of kinship with the battered old ship. She was a survivor, just like him. Beaten down, but not broken. Ready to give the Creelans hell, no matter the odds. Welcome aboard, Captain, came a cheerful voice from the end of the corridor. A young woman in grease-stained coveralls bounded up to them, her face smudged with the engine grime. She snapped a smart salute, her grin practically splitting her face in two. Ensign Jenna Robbins, Chief Engineer, at your service. Royce returned the salute, a smile tugging at his own lips. Robbins' enthusiasm was infectious. At ease, Ensign. I take it you're the miracle worker who's going to keep this bucket of bolts flying? Aye, Captain. She may not look like much, but the Rev here has got it where it counts. My team's been working around the clock to get her ship shape. We'll have her purring like a kitten in no time. Glad to hear it. We're going to need every advantage we can get out there. Robbins nodded solemnly. 
I heard about the mission, sir. Sneaking into the heart of Creelan territory, hitting their command ship, it's ballsy as hell. But if anyone can pull it off, it's you. Royce appreciated the vote of confidence, even if he didn't entirely share it. This mission was a long shot at best, a suicide run at worst. But what choice did they have? The war was going badly and this was their last desperate gamble. Walk with me, Ensign, he said, gesturing for her to follow. Brief me on the Rafir's capabilities. I want to know every trick this old girl has up her sleeve. As they made their way through the ship, Royce felt a growing sense of determination. The Rafir might be a rust bucket, and her crew a ragtag bunch of misfits, but they were the Commonwealth's best hope. The Creelans wouldn't know what hit them. It was time to show those buggy bastards what humans were made of, to prove that courage and tenacity could overcome any obstacle, to make the galaxy safe for all species, not just the strong. Humanity, fuck yeah. The briefing room was packed to the gills with officers from every branch of the Commonwealth military. Grim-faced admirals rubbed elbows with fresh-faced fighter jocks, all united in their determination to strike a blow against the Creelan menace. At the front of the room, a holographic display flickered to life, showing a wireframe schematic of the Rafir. Roy stepped forward, his face set in hard lines. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our target, he said, pointing to a pulsing red dot at the center of that display. The Creelan command ship, designation Hive Queen, intel suggests that the Creelan Emperor himself is aboard, directing the war effort. A murmur rippled through the crowd. The Creelan Emperor was a shadowy figure, rarely seen outside of his inner sanctum. Taking him out would be a game changer. The plan is simple, but not easy, Royce continued. We'll be inserting a small team onto the Hive Queen via the Rifer. Once aboard, we'll make our way to the Emperor's chambers and eliminate him with extreme prejudice. What about their defenses? Asked a skeptical looking Colonel. The Hive Queen is sure to be heavily guarded. Royce nodded. Absolutely. That's where the Riffer comes in. She may not look like much, but she's got a few surprises up her sleeve. Ensign Robbins? Jenna stepped forward, a fierce grin on her face. We've retrofitted the Riff here with a cloaking device scavenged from a captured Creelan scout ship. It's not perfect, but it should get us close enough to dock without being detected. Once we're inside, we'll be relying on stealth and speed, Royce said. We'll have to neutralize any opposition quickly and quietly. Fortunately, we have some experience in that department. He glanced over at Sergeant Hopkins, the leader of the Commonwealth's elite shadow squad. The grizzled veteran met his gaze with a curt nod, his eyes glinting with barely contained violence. Sergeant Hopkins and his team will be our tip of the spear, Royce said. They'll clear the way for the rest of us to reach the Emperor's chambers. Once there, we'll plant a quantum singularity bomb and get the hell out of Dodge. Another murmur swept the room, this one tinged with awe and fear. Quantum singularity bombs were the most destructive weapons in the Commonwealth arsenal, capable of tearing a hole in the fabric of space-time itself. Setting one off inside the Hive Queen would be like unleashing a miniature black hole. I won't lie to you, Royce said, his voice grave. This is a high-risk mission. Many of us may not come back, but if we succeed, we could end this war once and for all. We could save billions of lives and ensure a future for the Commonwealth. He paused, letting his words sink in. Then he drew himself up to his full height, his eyes blazing with determination. I know I'm asking a lot of you, but I also know that each and every one of you is up to the task. You're the best damn soldiers, sailors, and pilots in the galaxy. And together, we're going to show the Creelans what happens when you mess with humanity. A roar of approval went up from the assembled officers, fists pumping the air. Royce felt a surge of pride in his chest. These were his people, his brothers and sisters in arms, and he would lead them to victory or die trying. As the briefing broke up, Royce pulled Sergeant Hopkins aside. A word, Sergeant. Hopkins fell into step beside him, his face an unreadable mask. What's on your mind, Captain? I need you to do something for me, Royce said quietly. Something off the books. Hopkins raised an eyebrow. I'm listening. If things go sideways on the Hive Queen, if it looks like we're not going to make it out, I want you to get Jenna to safety. No matter what, Hopkins' eyes widened slightly. Sir, with all due respect, Ensign Robbins is a soldier like the rest of us. She knows the risks. I know that, damn it, my... Royce snapped. But she's also the best damn engineer in the fleet. We need her mind, her skills. The Commonwealth can't afford to lose her. He took a deep breath, 
lowering his voice. And I can't, I won't let her die on some bug infested hellhole if I can help it. Hopkins was silent for a long moment, his eyes searching Royce's face. Then he nodded slowly. Understood, sir. I'll make sure she gets out, no matter what. Royce clapped him on the shoulder, a lump in his throat. Thank you, Sergeant. I knew I could count on you. They parted ways, each lost in their own thoughts. Royce made his way back to the Rafir, his mind racing with plans and contingencies. There was still so much to do, so many preparations to make, but he knew in his bones that this was their best chance, their only chance. As he stepped aboard the battered old freighter, he felt a strange sense of calm wash over him. This was where he belonged, on the front lines, leading the charge. And with his crew at his side, he felt like he could take on the whole damn Krillin Empire himself. Humanity. Fuck yeah, indeed. The Rafir glided through the void like a ghost, its cloaking device rendering it all but invisible to the naked eye. On the bridge, Royce sat in the captain's chair, his knuckles white on the armrests. Status report, he barked. Cloaking device holding steady, Jenna replied from the engineering station. We're approaching the Hive Queen's perimeter defenses. Weapons and shields on standby, Grilleth added from tactical. Ready to engage on your command. Royce nodded, his jaw clenched tight. This was it, the moment of truth. They were about to fly straight into the heart of the Creelin war machine, and there was no turning back. Take us in, nice and easy, he said to the helmsman. Let's not give them any reason to get suspicious. The Rafir slipped past the outer ring of defense satellites, its cloak shimmering slightly as it brushed against their sensor nets. Royce held his breath, waiting for the alarms to sound, for the Creelin ships to come swarming out like angry hornets. But nothing happened. The Rafir continued on its course, drawing ever closer to the looming bulk of the Hive Queen. I've got a visual on the docking bay, the helmsman reported. Initiating final approach. Royce leaned forward in his chair, his eyes narrowed. Steady as she goes. Sergeant Hopkins, get your team ready to deploy. Aye, sir, Hopkins replied over the comm. We'll be ready to move as soon as we're docked. The Rafir shuddered slightly as it entered the Hive Queen's docking bay, its cloak flickering and fading away. Royce gripped the armrest tighter, his heart pounding in his chest. We're in, Jenna said, her voice tense. Cloak disengaged. We're exposed. Get that singularity bomb primed and ready, Royce ordered. We need to move fast. He unstrapped himself from the chair and made his way to the airlock, where Sergeant Hopkins and his team were waiting. They were a tough-looking bunch, armed to the teeth with pulse rifles and plasma grenades. You know the drill, Royce said, checking the charge on his own weapon. We get in, plant the bomb, and get out. Quick and quiet. Hopkins nodded, his face grim. We'll get it done, sir. The Emperor won't know what hit him. The airlock hissed open, revealing the cavernous expanse of the Hive Queen's docking bay. It was eerily quiet, with no sign of any Krillin warriors. I don't like this, Grilleth muttered scanning the shadows with his rifle. Where are they? Probably scrambling to respond to our arrival, Royce said, but they'll be here soon enough. Let's move. They made their way deeper into the ship, following the schematics Jenna had pulled from the Creelan database. The corridors were dark and twisting, lined with pulsing organic walls that seemed to throb with a sickly inner light. Suddenly, a shrill alarm began to sound, echoing through the ship like a banshee's wail. Royce cursed under his breath. They know we're here. Double time it, people. They broke into a run, their boots pounding on the deck plates. Around the next corner, they came face to face with a phalanx of Creelan warriors, their chitin armor gleaming in the dim light. Contact front, Hopkins yelled. Opening fire with his pulse rifle, the air was filled with the sizzle of plasma bolts and the chatter of automatic weapons fire. Royce dove for cover behind a bulkhead, popping up to snap off a few shots of his own. One by one, the Creelan warriors fell, their carapaces shattered by the relentless onslaught. But more kept coming, pouring out of every hatchway and access tunnel. We're being overrun, Grilleth shouted, lobbing a plasma grenade into the midst of the Creelan horde. We have to fall back! Negative, Royce yelled back. We push forward. Jenna, how much further to the Emperor's chambers? Fifty meters, straight ahead, Jenna replied, her voice crackling over the comm. But, Captain, I'm reading a massive energy surge from that direction. Something's happening. Royce gritted his teeth, a cold sweat breaking out on his brow. Then let's not wait around to find out what it is, 
Hopkins, take point. Carve us a path. Hopkins let out a wordless battle cry and charged forward, his rifle blazing. The rest of the team followed close behind, leapfrogging from cover to cover as they advanced. At last, they reached the massive blast doors that led to the Emperor's sanctum. Jenna ran forward, attaching a breaching charge to the reinforced metal. Fire in the hole, she yelled, diving for cover. The charge detonated with a thunderous boom, blasting the doors off their hinges. Royce and his team stormed through the smoking ruins, weapons at the ready. And there, floating in the center of the room, was the Creelan Emperor himself. He was a massive, bloated creature, his body pulsing with sickly green light. Cables and wires snaked from his flesh, connecting him to the ship's systems like some kind of grotesque puppet master. Humans, the Emperor hissed, his voice dripping with contempt. You dare to invade my sanctum? You dare to challenge the might of the Krillin Empire? We dare, Royce said, leveling his rifle at the Emperor's head. And we're here to end your reign of terror once and for all. The Emperor laughed, a horrible grating sound that set Royce's teeth on edge. Foolish primates, you have no idea what you're up against. Behold the true power of the Krillin. The Emperor's body began to glow even brighter, tendrils of energy lashing out from his flesh. Royce and his team opened fire, but their shots were absorbed harmlessly by the Emperor's shields. It's no use, Griloth cried. We need to set off the Singularity Bomb. Royce nodded grimly. Jenna, prime the bomb. Everyone else, fall back to the river. I'll hold him off. Captain, no, Jenna protested. You can't. That's an order, Ensign, Royce snapped. Go now. Jenna hesitated for a moment, tears in her eyes. Then she turned and ran, the rest of the team close behind her. Royce turned back to face the Emperor, a determined smile on his face. Looks like it's just you and me, ugly. The Emperor snarled, energy crackling around him. You will die, screaming human. Not today, Royce said, raising his rifle. Today we end this war. He opened fire, pouring every ounce of his skill and determination into each shot. The Emperor howled in pain and rage, his shields flickering and failing under the onslaught. Jenna's voice crackled over the comm. Captain, the Singularity Bomb is primed and ready. You need to get out of there. Royce glanced at the Emperor who was struggling to maintain his shields. Roger that, Jenna, I'm on my way. With a final burst of fire, Royce turned and sprinted for the exit. Behind him, the Emperor let out a roar of fury, energy lashing out in all directions. Royce dove through the blast doors just as they slammed shut, the Emperor's screams echoing in his ears. He scrambled to his feet and raced back to the river, his heart pounding in his chest. As he burst onto the bridge, Jenna looked up at him with relief in her eyes. Captain, you made it. Royce grinned, adrenaline still surging through his veins. Wouldn't miss the fireworks for the world. Now let's blow this joint and go home. Jenna nodded, her fingers flying over the controls. Singularity bomb detonating in three, two, one. The Hive Queen erupted in a blinding flash of light, the singularity bomb tearing the ship apart from the inside out. The riffer rocked and shuddered as the shockwave hit, but Jenna kept them steady guiding them away from the expanding debris field. On the view screen, the remnants of the Creelan fleet were in chaos, their ships scattering in all directions. Without the Emperor to guide them, they were lost and leaderless. We did it, Grilleth said, a grin spreading across his face. We actually did it. Royce clapped him on the shoulder, pride swelling in his chest. Damn right we did, and it's all thanks to this crew the bravest and most talented bunch of misfits I've ever had the pleasure of serving with. The bridge erupted in cheers and applause, the crew hugging and congratulating each other. They had struck a decisive blow against the Krillin Empire today and shown the galaxy the true strength and courage of the human spirit. As the Rafir set course for home, Royce settled back into his chair, a contented smile on his face. They had a long road ahead of them, but for now they could bask in the glow of victory. Humanity, fuck yeah.